sao in ring shring ka e la ring asang ka hala ring chaka la ring sao ain kling ring shring Namaste. So I'd like to say a little something about nothing. <laughs> I mean, nothing is a very important thing. <laughs> it's variously known as shunyata, emptiness. Sometimes people call it nothingness, as if that's any different from nothing, but somehow or other. They make it more complicated. Nothing is nothing. <laughs> it's also space, akasha. And it's also bindu. Bindu. What does that mean? So I want to take a look at that. And I think the best way to approach it is through the Buddha's teaching. The Buddha gave eight levels of meditation called jhana. Jhana is a Pali word, comes from dhyana, Sanskrit word meaning meditation, or at least it's translated as meditation, but actually our understanding of meditation, especially in the West, is very crippled. So let's look into it a little bit more. There are eight jhanas. The first four are concentration, nonverbal cognition, happiness, and ecstasy. Those are just the first four. and They're called the mundane jhanas or the human jhanas. These are the things that most humans would like and they can comprehend them very easily. Everybody can understand happiness, bliss, and we've all had experiences of nonverbal cognition, which are very pleasant. And before all you can do any of that, you have to have good concentration. So concentration, of course, in the yoga system is known as dharana. Dharana means fixing the mind on one point. So when one surpasses these four levels of human jhanas, <clears throat> one gets to the superhuman jhanas, five through eight. And those are, in order, infinite space, infinite consciousness, nothingness, and neither perception nor non-perception. So these are actual states that we can experience and should experience if we want to know the real conclusion of both the Buddha and the Vedas. Why is that? Well, first let's talk a little bit about this progression of uh, infinite space, infinite consciousness, emptiness, and neither perception nor non-perception. If we have a truly infinite space, space that extends unlimitedly. That means that space is much, much bigger than the creation. After all, the creation, no matter how big it is, has to be limited. But space doesn't have to be limited, because what is space? Space is nothing, right? <laughs> you can have as much nothing as you want. So unlimited space. How do we know we have unlimited space? Well, we find that we can fill that space with unlimited consciousness. In other words, we can be conscious of every point within this unlimited space, such that our consciousness of the manifested world shrinks to a tiny dot and finally disappears and just gets lost in this unlimited space. So then what do we got? <laughs> a 
nothingness. Because what is space? No things, right? It's just empty. Of course, without space, things cannot exist. But it's hard to say if space itself exists or doesn't exist because it's nothing. So let's find out. So here we are, we have this unlimited space filled with unlimited consciousness. You should try this, by the way. <laughs> let's not just talk about it. This is meant to be practical. So when you have this unlimited space full of unlimited consciousness, you discover something very interesting. There's no way to tell the difference between one point in space and another point in space. They're both the same. They're both just empty space. Without having something to act as a reference point, there's no way to determine where you are in unlimited space. Well, there is no where, huh? because the, the very meaning of the word where, the very concept of location, depends on having a reference point, a zero point, an origin. So because of that, <laughs> it's impossible to tell one point in space from another point in space. So any point in space might as well be any other point in space because they're all identical. So what does that mean in practical terms? There's only one point in space. Let that sink in for a minute. Because that one point is identical to all the other points. There's no difference between them. They're all the same. So if they're all the same, there's only one. And that leads to the next stage. If there's only one point, there's nowhere to go, nothing to do, nothing to perceive in empty space, we don't know, we can't tell whether we're perceptive, perceptive or non-perceptive. There's no way to tell whether we're conscious or unconscious. In other words, consciousness itself becomes redundant. The duality of knower, known, and knowledge, which is actually a trinity, I know. Well, we call it duality object and subject, but it's actually a trinity. Anyway, that distinction collapses because there's no way to make the distinction. That means consciousness itself collapses. And what are we left with? Pure awareness without an object. Hey, didn't we talk about that when we were discussing nirvana? Nirvana? Huh? Yes, this is Nibbana, and this is how we reach Nibbana. Of course, prior to that, a whole bunch of other conditions have to be satisfied, like no more sankharas, uh, <laughs> no more ignorance, right view, right livelihood, etc., 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 so that you're not creating karmas. But wait a minute, this sounds very familiar. In fact, we have all experienced this countless times. It's called death. At the time of death, we enter into these jhanas, these states, and we go through this exact same uh, progression. So everybody has experienced this innumerable times. We all know it. Huh? But we're scared to death of it. I mean, <laughs> see, this is a conundrum because everything here is, is entangled with everything else. Quantum entanglement on a universal scale. So what happens? Why do some people go through this progression and become enlightened and others go through it and they come back in the material world and are born again in samsara, 
In other words, why do certain people attain liberation and others don't? Well, it's very simple. The ones who attain liberation understand this process, this progression of states, and they don't resist it. In fact, they welcome it. And the ones who resist it, even though it's inevitable and baked into the very nature of reality, form karmas and vasanas that bring them back into the world again. In doing so, they come very close to the ultimate state. But because they resist it, they can't settle in the ultimate and they have to come back again. So this is how it goes after leaving the body. One finds oneself in infinite space. And pervading this space with its consciousness, one finds that it's all the same. There's no difference between any point and any other point. So there's no dimension, you see. Actual space is dimensionless. There's no way to measure the extent of it. So because of that, there's no action. And because of that, there's no difference between subject and object, therefore no consciousness. Still, there's awareness, but there's nothing to be aware of except the fact that one is aware. But one cannot be sure whether one is perceptive or percipient, as the technical term is, or non-percipient. So that's all right, because this is the source of everything. This is the place of unlimited bliss. This is the ultimate refuge, nirvana, or nirvana. So, what does that mean for us? <laughs> well, this is also Bindu. Bindu, of course, is the dot that takes an ordinary letter and turns it into a bija, a bijakshara. Regular letters are called akshara, letter of the alphabet. A bijakshara is a seed that, when chanted or meditated on, creates certain results. By watering the seed, then something grows out of it. And of course, the best known is Aum. Aum. Huh? We've been over this many, many times. How the, the half moon, or crescent moon, and dot over Aum means that when it's meditated on, it brings these three things, the subject, object, and perception, or consciousness, into one. And this is Brahman. Huh? This is the, the goddess. She is the Saguna Brahman, Brahman with qualities. And Shiva is the Nirguna Brahman, without qualities. So by uh, going from the triple, which, you know, starts out, that's how Aum starts out, right? With the triple, it even looks like a three. Actually, that's the Sanskrit letter A, A. But then, because it goes through the curly, the curly part is the ooh, and the crescent moon and dot is the mm. So in these three, when they become one, this is Bindu. So because of the power of Bindu, these uh, Bijaksharas have immense potency. And when we chant them, for example, in the Shodashi Mantra, or even in the Gayatri Mantra, then we get tremendous benefits from it. Now, that's why I recommend everyone to get initiated into Siddhi Mantra, learn your Atma Bija, and start to chant Shodashi Mantra. This is the path, the Sri Vidya path, the Kaula path. Not that we have to do all kinds of arduous exercises to raise the Kundalini. Kundalini will raise all by itself. She, I mean herself. <laughs> She's perfectly capable of standing up for herself. <laughs> 
She is the power of life energy in the body. And she is the Saguna Brahman. Whereas Shiva, residing in the Sahasrara, is the Nirguna Brahman, the pure awareness that she transforms into the triple of consciousness. So, you see, nothing is really something, isn't it? <laughs> the power of nothing is vast. I mean, even quantum physics recognizes that empty space has tremendous, actually unlimited potential. So when that space passes through, through the transform of manifestation of the process of becoming, Paticca Samupada, which we've gone into on this channel many, many, many times, although very few people seem to have got it, then this space manifests all the qualities that we perceive in the world, proving that those qualities were latent within it the whole time. So, nothing really is something, but it's something in the unmanifest state. And when it becomes manifest, then we find the whole world and everything is there. So, the process of self-realization means to take this process of manifestation and run it backwards so you come again to the original unmanifest bindu, emptiness, shunyata, space, uh, nothing, nothingness. And this is enlightenment. Aung Tatsa. Aung Shakti Aung. <laughs>